Welcome to Catherine's Place. This is the former home of Australian author Catherine Susanna Pritchard and now a thriving community hub known as the KSP Writers' Centre. My name is Elizabeth Lewis and it is my pleasure to be taking you on this digital tour today. It was 1919 when Catherine and her new husband, Captain Hugo Throssell, who liked to be called Jim, purchased this house in Greenmount, Western Australia. They were a celebrity couple, a famous novelist and a Victoria Cross war hero, looking forward to a bright future together. Catherine and Hugo enjoyed settling into the little cottage, with the garden being one of their favourite places to potter. During their first ten years here, they established a garden with plenty of fragrant flowers, climbing plants and fruit trees for making jam and preserves. They stabled horses, which Hugo named after characters from his wife's stories. They also added verandas with local stone pillars, established a rose garden and planted over 80 metres of plumbago hedge, which still exists today. Their only son, Rick Throssell, who was named after Hugo's brother and born on the dining room table in 1922, remembers those early days with fondness. When the climbing black boy roses, wisteria and currants grew, sheltering the house from the late afternoon sun, the veranda was the place where Jim and Catherine could drink the evening sherry as the first cool whisper of the southerly stirred the leaves. Catherine and Hugo knew how to celebrate, and during their years here, they hosted many grand social events, including their niece's gypsy-themed wedding, political gatherings, and tea parties with friends. Unfortunately, Hugo's greatest show was his undoing. During the Great Depression, Hugo put all their money into a rodeo on these very grounds while Catherine was overseas. At the last minute, Hugo was banned from taking an admission fee, as the event had been scheduled to run on a Sunday, which was known as the Holy Day of Rest. He was ruined. Round down by his financial losses and terrible memories of war, it was not long after that he took his own life on the veranda. Catherine was devastated by Hugo's death and concludes her autobiography, Child of the Hurricane, with a dedication to him. This is Catherine's workroom. It was built in 1930 by Hugo and a team of local labourers using the royalties of her most famous novel, Coonadoo. There is no spot in Catherine's place today which feels more filled with her presence. Let's take a peek inside Catherine's workroom. For decades, Catherine walked down the winding path from the house to sit in this room each day and work, overlooking her beloved wild garden and the Perth city skyline. She kept her notes and manuscripts stacked neatly in these cupboards. You can still see the etchings that Hugo carved, which served as labels for her work. The Bougainvillea and Plumbago hedge, which line the path to the workroom, has its own unique history. Rick tells the tale in his autobiography, My Father's Son. You could see it coming. There was bound to be a crackdown on known communists. Communist newspapers were banned, and the party offices were raided. On one of my weekends at home in Greenmount, together we filled an old tin trunk with her most precious books and magazines, and all the copies of the workers' star we could find. That night I hauled the trunk out of the house 
and hid it as well as I could in the middle of a thicket of plumbago and bougainvillea. In the morning, the police arrived. Catherine was an outspoken communist and peace activist, holding ideals for a more just and equal world, free of poverty and suffering. She became known by locals as the Red Witch of Greenmount. Catherine's granddaughter, Karen Throssell, said that Catherine was not offended by this title. In fact, she was proud of it. The buildings and garden at KSP Writers' Centre are WA State Heritage listed and have been classified by the National Trust for their demonstration of a way of life, historical significance and environmental importance. These three Jarrah writing cabins were built in 2010 in the style of Catherine's original workroom. They can be hired any time throughout the year or writers can apply to stay for a residency or fellowship. This quaint little building, which is now the KSP Writers' Centre office, was originally a wash house. It still has the historic old copper, also known as a wash copper or copper boiler, inside, which back in Catherine's day was used to heat water to wash clothes and dishes. Come inside with me and I'll show you Catherine's house. In this room, which is now our community kitchen, you can see Catherine's old Meta's top fire wood stove, which would have warmed hands in winter and boiled many pots of delicious stew. The shelf and pantry cupboards in this room are thought to be original. The dining room and the family room are home to a collection of Catherine's publications, memorabilia, family photos, as well as books on display by KSP Centre members. These days, these rooms are generally used for socialising, much like it was back in Catherine's time too. Catherine was known for having long conversations with friends over a glass of wine. If it was winter, they would sit by a roaring fireplace. In summer, Outside on the veranda with a cup of tea was the best place to be. In the Oscar winning movie Shine, starring Geoffrey Rush, who played pianist prodigy David Helfgott, you'll see a replica of these very rooms. It was here in the late 1960s that an elderly Catherine struck up a friendship with the teenage David and became a mentor to him. David would visit on Friday nights and play music for Catherine. She favoured the Russian composers. This room was added after Catherine's time. It is used for writing group meetings, workshops and events. We like to think that Catherine enjoys watching over all this humming creativity in her home. On the west side of the house, you will find Catherine's former bedroom, 
which is set up as a museum and also used as a printing room for our writers in residence and fellows. To the right of the hallway is our beautiful little library where members can browse books or sit quietly by the window and read. On the 2nd of October 1969, shortly before her 86th birthday, Catherine passed away peacefully in her bed at home. She had a communist funeral with the red flag covering her coffin and an armful of blue Leshenaltia placed on top. As she had wished, her ashes were scattered over her beloved Greenmount Hills. Rick sold Catherine's place in the 1970s. It was then owned by the Lewis and O'Kane families before its purchase by the West Australian State Government in 1984. 11 Old York Road, was vested in the care of the Shire of Mundaring and leased to the newly formed Catherine Susanna Pritchard Foundation on the 2nd of October 1985, exactly 16 years after Catherine's death. Thank you for joining me on this tour. There are so many more secrets and stories here at Catherine's Place, as well as all the time and space you need to write. On behalf of the KSP Writers Centre Board of Management, I invite you next time you're in Perth to come and visit us and experience this beautiful place in person. We hope to see you soon.